The Salish Sea is one of the world's most amazing ecosystems, overflowing with life, and it's the best place on earth to be a wildlife veterinarian. Join me, Joe Gatos, and Team Sea Doc as we explore the natural wonders of the Pacific Northwest in Salish Sea Wild. Hi, this is Joe Gatos with the Sea Doc Society, and I'm at the beach today on a minus tide, which is a very low, low tide. And I'm here today because the word is that this is the best place to find one of the Salish Sea's most fascinating and colorful creatures. Oh, there it is. We found an Adam Summers the one and only Professor Adam Summers of the University of Washington's Friday Harbor Labs. Adam has a degree in math and engineering and a PhD in evolutionary biology. Hey Adam. Hey Joe, how are you? I'm great. So for such a smart guy, what are you doing down here in this muck? What do you mean what am I doing? This is where inspiration happens. You mean it's not just all dead seaweed? Oh no my friend, under many of these rocks, there are awesome fishes. All right. Adam is such an expert on awesome fishes that Pixar Studios called on him to ensure the characters in Finding Nemo looked and moved as accurately as possible. And that's, what kind of poacher is that one? That's Here at his biomechanics lab, Adam combines observations of live animals with high-tech tools like 3D modeling and CT scans to discover how species evolve specialized anatomies to survive various environments. And of all the niches in the Salish Sea ecosystem, the one that really demands extraordinary adaptation is the intertidal zone. This is also a habitat that everyone can get out and explore. Okay, Adam, well, let's find some animals, but what's the etiquette here? We don't want to hurt any of these things we're looking at. No, Joe, you, you really don't. So you want to be somewhat careful about picking up and flipping rocks and, and really about putting rocks back. So when you pick up a rock, be gentle in picking it up. And then as you put it back, make sure you put it wet side down and make sure you don't squoosh anybody. So, but it's okay to pick these animals up and these fish up? No, these are intertidal creatures. They are used to a rough and tough existence waves crashing, big temperature swings, big salinity changes. So by and large, they're not delicate. You may get bitten, you may get pinched, but as long as you're gentle with the animals and you replace them where you found them, these are safe to handle. All right, well, let's find something. All right. We find creatures under every rock, like this beautiful porcelain crab and the six-armed sea star. But it takes a pro like Adam to show us how to catch even cooler stuff. Oh, you got him. This may look like a baby eel, but it's a high coxcomb prickleback, a remarkable fish that can breathe air and lives in extreme conditions that would kill most other marine species. How are they surviving? Let's tell me, tell me that. They're under the rock in the gap okay. between the rock cobbles and the gravel. Okay. And they're eeling around, they're eating stuff. They're eating Why they're out of the water. Yeah. I yeah. love They're eating this. invertebrates that are also sort of concentrated, right? So when the tide is, is high, everybody's spread out all over. Tide goes down, all and all go those yummy out. prey items come in to the area underneath the rock, because they don't want to desiccate. Right. And that's where these guys are making their living. Just, just like hanging the, out there eating. Just like the Coast Salish, they say, when the tide is out, the table is set. That's right. For these fish as well. Absolutely. That's exactly the right analogy. Hey, Coast Salish little buddy. You never know what you're going to find when you start poking your head around the this inner tidal. Oh, no, I got a clingfish. That's a clingfish! <laughs> Look at that. The northern clingfish is a real inner tidal treasure, a biomechanical marvel whose pectoral and pelvic fins have evolved into a suction cup that can stick to rough and slimy surfaces. This adaptation allows the clingfish to stay put in crashing waves and also gives it leverage to pry limpets off of rocks to eat. So Adam, thank you so much for this amazing day on the beach. We've learned so much. We really, really appreciate it. That's my pleasure, Joe. Okay. Take care. So this is Joe Gatos with the Sea Doc Society. Join us next time for Salish Sea Wild. Adam, how long do these things stay stuck like this? Don't know, Joe. Never really seen one stick that long. I think I know why they call it a clingfish. <laughs>